Thank you very much for tuning in to today's episode. If you like what you see, don't forget to smash that like button! Smash that like button! Let's get on to the show. Hey guys, this is Down Phoenix, and today Cliffy B has dropped a huge bombshell on Twitter when it comes to Boss Key Productions. Boss Key Productions is the studio that Cliffy B has helmed for the past couple of years or so, developing games such as Lawbreakers and the recently released Radical Heights. Unfortunately, things have not been rosy for the studio, and Cliffy B has announced that they are shutting down. Given the news, I figure it'd be very important to talk about the cautionary tale that is involved for a game developer such as Cliffy B. Cliffy B is one of the most renowned game developers in the industry. There are some, of course, like Shigeru Miyamoto and Hideo Kojima that obviously have him outclassed in terms of status, but for the most part, Cliffy B was one of the top dogs in the industry. Despite that status, however, he hasn't been able to get the same kind of success with his new studio as he has in the past with Epic. Now, Epic, of course, is a huge game developer and publisher that has been making games for a very long time. They've been developing games for over 20 years. They actually have the number one third-party license engine, the Unreal Engine. And Fortnite, of course, is arguably Epic's most successful game of all time, which is pretty impressive when you consider that they also made games such as Gears of War and Unreal Tournament. So obviously, Cliffy B has had a huge hand in making Epic what it is today. However, despite his notoriety in the gaming industry, he just has not been able to make Lightning Strike twice when it comes to Boss Key Productions. Their first game, of course, was Lawbreakers, as you know, which was a first-person multiplayer competitive shooter that has some similarities to games like Overwatch, as well as some similarities to old-school FPS games like Quake. Unfortunately, in spite of great critical acclaim that the game has received, albeit not as much as Overwatch, but still rated pretty good on Metacritic, the game has not been a very successful title in terms of actual sales. This game has floundered almost from the start, and player numbers have always been really low with this particular title. It's really sad to see that a game that is considered good by many people that have actually played it flops so easily. But this is kind of the saddest state of affairs that we have in the gaming industry. Companies have to realize that if you're making a multiplayer-based game, and it's multiplayer only, that multiplayer gameplay has to be super addictive to keep people on board. Even if Lawbreakers was a well-designed game, it clearly didn't have that gameplay hook that would have attracted the average gaming audience. They, of course, did find a niche audience that seemed to enjoy the game, but as they notice, player numbers will dwindle and go down, and development in the game, of course, naturally starts to slow down when they see that the success of the game is no longer a reality. A lot of the long-term players that probably would have played this game for years and years, potentially, had to leave because, well, nobody else was playing it. Why should they continue playing it? That's kind of a sad state of affairs when you make a game like this. And then we have the recent release of Radical Heights, which literally came out just over a month ago. They had a surprise trailer announcement on April 9th, and then immediately the next day they had launched into Steam Early Access, or extreme early access or whatever they decided to call it right but anyways the game was clearly launched way too early now i will admit based on my experience of radical heights there are actually some really nice gameplay hooks to it there is actually some decent mechanics involved with the game however it's clear the game was nowhere near ready to release there are a lot of bugs and glitches the graphics are barely there at all. There's practically no object environments. There's just not much going on in this game, unfortunately. It does have some good creative hooks, but that's literally all it has. It's a shell of a game outside of that, and that's kind of what's sad. The 80s aesthetic is great and zany and ridiculous, 
And that is one of the best things about Radical Heights. Unfortunately, it's only aesthetics. They should have used the 80s in order to assist the game more mechanically. They should have done a lot of things. They should have, they should have, they should have. It's easy for someone like myself to be an armchair developer when the fact of the matter is this was a studio that had worked many years trying to make what they considered to be the perfect first-person shooter. And they were so confident with the success of Lawbreakers that they pretty much put all their eggs in this one basket. <laughs> and of course, it didn't take long for them to realize that, hey, this game is not a success. We've got to find something else. And then boom, the huge success of Fortnite and PUBG and these other Battle Royale games started happening. And they knew that they had to get a piece of that pie. They had to go back on their own principles and make a free-to-play Battle Royale game as quickly as possible. Radical Heights is the result of that. There were some good ideas behind the game, but unfortunately it was just released way too early. The state that the game was released in was a telltale sign that the studio was in great trouble. They were betting on as many people as possible to buy these starter packs so that they could have some funds for the studio. Unfortunately, it was too little, too late. People weren't going to invest in a game that is so undercooked, especially given the status that Boss Key Productions has earned in the gaming community. And so unfortunately it's floundered, with no parent studios wanting to dive in to help them out. Or maybe there were, but perhaps Boss Key Productions just didn't want to stoop to their level in order to make this game the way they want it to be. So from here, Cliffy B has announced that he is going to take time away from the gaming industry like he has in the past before, and he wants to focus on his family. I can respect that. It's probably a good idea for him to kind of recoup and, you know, just take a sit down, you know, rest for a couple of years, and then maybe if he's still bored and he wants to get back into gaming, he should go back into it. But he definitely needs a new strategy, and I just wish the best for him. I mean, he is kind of a ridiculous and egomaniacal person. At least it seems like that on Twitter, but I, he seems like a really nice guy. And I give him respect. You know, I follow him on Twitter. I like reading a lot of his tweets. You know, he's a really entertaining dude. Uh, so hopefully him and the rest of the Boss Key team can find their own success, whether it's in gaming or in other avenues. So let me know what you guys think about this. And don't forget, like I said, this is a cautionary tale. This is something that can happen to anybody, even some of the greatest developers of all time. So, till then, Down Phoenix out. Thank you very much for tuning in to another episode. Today I would like to answer a question from my good friend, The Retro Bro. He asks, what do you love most about this gaming gen? What do you hate the most? That is an excellent question. As always, you guys are excellent question askers. If you want to ask a question, don't forget to post it in the comments, by the way. But anyways, what do I love most about this gaming generation? I just love the extremely high level of quality in the game releases that we've received this generation. It was a little worrying at first seeing that a lot of the early releases that we got seemed to be remasters of last gen games, and to some degree that is still a problem. That being said, once 2015 or so started hitting, it just seemed like game after game was coming out on all the systems that really was hitting hard, and it was an excellent time. And now we're getting to a point in 2018 where we're getting releases like God of War which is arguably one of the best action games I've ever played. I mean, this game is just a must. If you have not played God of War, I highly recommend it. It so far has overtaken the rest of the series in my heart, not only because the gameplay is just brutal and fast-paced and visceral, but I love the up-close camera perspective, which really adds a lot of gruesome detail to it, not to mention the excellent story. And then, of course, what do I hate most about this generation? I think it's pretty obvious. Microtransactions. I mean, I'm not completely opposed to microtransactions, especially if it's just cosmetic-only stuff, but it is clearly apparent that the gaming industry has gone 
too reliant on these mechanics. And we just need to kind of pull all the stops out. So, again, if you guys have any questions, don't forget to post them in the comments below. And thank you again for watching. Till then, down Phoenix out.